Hi everybody! Today I was going to do another acrylic pour silhouette using my Crafty Gen technique with the vinyls. And today is underwater theme. So I have a new, this is a seahorse silhouette that I'm going to use today. And these are my pre cut vinyls that I sell on my website so you can check out a link in the description or the card up here in the corner you can click on there too and they come with the negative and the positive side so today we're going to use both in order to create a super fun really cool crafty gen silhouette acrylic pour swipe <laughs> what a name hey <laughs> so I'm just gonna peel off portion of the silhouette. Sometimes it's easy to simply just peel off a little portion and put it onto your canvas. Today I'm using a 10 by 20 inch canvas that I got from Michaels. And you can use any kind of size. I do make these in a lot of different sizes. Like if you're using it for a bigger one totally can accommodate you guys on different sizes that you want or some custom ones. <laughs> I gotta get his little tail. There we go. And the nice part is these are movable and you can reposition them to where you want them on your canvas. So that, here you can get a better view. This is the positive side of the silhouette, which I'm going to use to protect the swipe and paint a cool underwater scene on the negative side. But to start, we got to seal the negative side of the vinyl to the canvas. So with these canvases, you could, if you were to do these technique on a wooden canvas, you won't get any issues. I do them on the cheaper canvases so I can show you guys how to fix any issues that arise or if you get any peeling and stuff. But when you use higher grade canvases or wooden canvases, you don't have as many issues, obviously. <laughs> Especially wood, it just peels right off and works really good. But I always like to do it on these cheapo ones because it's accessible to everyone and that way I can also show you how to fix things that happen. So everything's kind of fixable. So what you want to do is you want to kind of figure out where you want to position your seahorse. So I do want to do a big underwater scene on the negative side, or sort of a scene. I usually put my silhouette in the first one-third one of the canvas to leave enough room for the beautiful swipe. But I think I'm kind of liking where he is right now, almost center. I think I'm just going to move him reposition them maybe up a little. I don't even mind that the tail is kind of cut off like that. It would give like a little whoop. That's kind of cute. And you can see the little horn on there. I think that's pretty good. Oh, we just have a little bump. <laughs> so I don't mind right here and then I'm going to do a swipe and then this leaves me enough room to paint a really cool underwater scene. So to seal, and I go through this with all of my silhouette videos, there's lots and I actually have a playlist if you go to my channel where you can view all of the different silhouettes that I've done <laughs> over time. I need to grab, usually I just grab a little piece of parchment paper here. I've got projects on the go all over. <laughs> I'm also working today on my Loli Vifi silicone mat. You can see the little corner there. And you can get 10% off your entire order of Loli Vifi products just by visiting their website and using my code GEN10. So I hope you guys check that out. So she's got a lot of amazing, cool products on her site. And I love these silicone mats for anything to do with resin or acrylic pouring. So, alright, to seal your vinyls, all you need is a little bit of Liquidex gloss varnish. There'll be a link in the description for that. I just put a little bit on some parchment paper just so I could pick it up. 
you want a very thin coat so I'm gonna coat it from here to here underneath and then put the vinyl down while it's wet and actually a good thing to do first which sometimes I forget <laughs> is you can use a pencil and just mark out kind of where your edges are just like this so you know where to put your Liquidex gloss. Don't worry because your pencil mark will be covered with acrylic paints anyways so no worries there. This just helps give you a guide on where to put your Liquidex gloss varnish. So you want a nice thin coat. You're going to see that I go all the way over and under and even out to the side I'm not too worried because I want to make sure that that gets nice and sealed so I go way past where the silhouette would normally be and then I actually push the vinyl down while it's wet so and then I take more Liquidex gloss varnish and I push down with the paintbrush so that it kind of seals it in and you get a nice good seal. Now Liquidex Gloss Varnish dries fairly quickly so just an FYI it uh, doesn't take too long to do this process. This piece right here I might have to hold it down when it's a little bit tackier and then I'm just going to peel up from the top up to where I had stopped with the gloss varnish and like I said a very thin layer just like this push it down while it's wet, grab a little more. It goes fairly quickly. And you just want to go from this side above and out to get a nice good seal on that on basically on your vinyl. I'm going to push a little more gloss varnish. You don't need very much for sealing your silhouettes down. So out from underneath making sure it's nice and thin. You don't want it too thick or it pulls up a lot of the gesso. And then I push it down with the brush. Get a nice good seal on there. Now for this portion I'm gonna do this whole area. <laughs> Feel free to do a big area like so because I have the pencil marks there I can kind of tell where the silhouette would be just a nice thin layer and then I put the vinyl down in the wet Liquidex gloss varnish and I grab a little more and I seal it up and it works really good especially on wooden canvases like I said I use the cheaper canvases because that's what a lot of people use and especially if you want to try it out definitely you can just grab these from Michaels there we go just like that and then I push this over and I'm gonna see if it's gonna stick or not sometimes you just have to hold it until that gloss varnish basically gets tacky and dries which is what I might have to do right here. So, and once this is dry, we'll come back and do the acrylic pour swipe with some pretty blues and mix up. A, I'll mix up a bunch of colors for it. I'm thinking. I think it'll look really cool, especially with a nice, beautiful ocean scene, underwater scene over here. Okay, everything's dry. It's all sealed now and it's ready for us to paint. I'm super excited about this one because I'm excited to paint the scene on the negative side. So today I'm using white for paint. I'm going to do that as my swiping color. I've got some silver, which is just Artist Loft silver. I mixed up a deep dark blue, so this is... Um, the brilliant blue from Artist Loft and then just some black to make a nice deep navy blue. And I'm using this is metallic Artist Loft metallic cobalt blue which is super pretty. 
So I think those will be some really good colors for ocean. And I have an idea of what to use the drippings with as well. So I have my transparency paper, which are awesome because you can reuse them. So before I was using paper towel, but I kind of like using this now because I can just wash them and clean them and then reuse them. So it kind of works out really good. So that's what I'm going to use for swiping. <laughs> and i got to add my silicone. So pretty much I just buy 100% silicone on Amazon. There will be a link in the description. And I'm just going to put two... Uh, drops of silicone into these colors here. But I'm not going to put any in the white because that's what I'm going to use for my basically my swiping. Alright, so that should be good for that. With the silicone I'm just going to kind of push it down and around I don't actually want to mix it in too, too much because then the cells will be bigger. So I'm just getting it so that it's inside the paint and ready. Floetrol also helps to get cells. So you don't, you know, if you use Floetrol, it also helps to get cells and stuff. And the white has no silicone. So, all right, I'm going to flood this area with some colors basically with my blues and my silver and stuff. And I'm just going to leave right here for the white because that's what's... And you can do this in stripes like I've done with a rainbow. Let it pour over the edges and stuff like this. I might bring a little bit in here. <laughs> nice and goopy. <laughs> If there's one thing about acrylic pouring is that it's not, uh, it's definitely messy, but you get some really cool results. So I'm going to try and fill some of the other areas with the other colors, just like so. That's why I didn't mix up too, too, and I don't want to put too, too much dark. So I'm just going to pour it over. And kind of some lines, maybe a little bit there, a little bit here. Just fill it in however you guys like. So that your canvas is coated. Has some nice colors in it. That'll come through. I used way more of the metallic cobalt blue than I am the other colors. Oops. Okay, well there'll be a big dark spot there. <laughs> And I mean, you can also just use your popsicle stick to add some back in or get some to go over the edges, like right here. And everything that's dripping over, all the paint that drips over, I'm going to use it to make a paint skin, so don't worry, nothing's going to get wasted. It is a lot of paint, but we use all the paint. Sometimes I like to just get the edges now while I can because that way when I swipe and it goes over the edge it makes it a lot easier. So make sure you have some paper towel on hand in order to do your acrylic pouring. <laughs> there we go. I got paper towel ready and I'm going to pour my white which is just some Artist Loft acrylic white and some flow trawl and a little bit of water. So I'm going to pour that right about here. And this is where I want to use this to swipe with. So if you're wondering about why I didn't pour it up here, I'm just going to spread it out after I do the swipe. Now this is always a challenging part because I don't want to hit the tripod <laughs> leg, but basically I'm just going to use my transparency and I'm just going to put it in that white, let it collect a bit. Once it's collected I'm going to slide it while lifting up a little bit. Boom. 
just like that. <laughs> awesome. I need a, a popsicle stick so I can get all this good paint off of the transparency and use that in my paint skin. There we go. I'm just going to put this transparency over here for a sec. And you're going to see that it's already going to start to create cells, which is awesome. I'm just going to give it a quick torch. Torching is to help pop the silicone bubbles and also helps to basically create a few more cells you'll find. But for the most part, this is going to really start to open up. And the cells will keep growing as it sits. So this was a pretty quick reaction right here, but you're going to find that over here, the cells will just keep growing and growing <laughs> until you have a whole bunch. I like to get the sides too. Boom. Beautiful seahorse. Love it. Oh, we even got a few more coming up here. <laughs> now you could, if you didn't like how far back it went, you could swipe this way and swipe back. I've done that before. But I think I'm going to leave it. Well, because when you tilt, you can tilt as well. Let's just try a little bit of tilting. It does stretch your cells out. So just an FYI that by tilting, you are going to get some stretched out cells. And you're going to see the white's going to go over that way. And then I can tilt back. Just like so. Let's see. Do I swipe back? <laughs> I totally could. And then I might have a thinner silhouette of the seahorse. You could also have cells going all the way up into the seahorse. Let's try swiping back. I know this gives everybody heart attacks when I do this stuff, <laughs> but it's okay because I'm here to experiment and then you can create your own. So I'm just going to grab this and swipe back. Because I actually want more of the color this way. So you're going to see that go all crazy. <laughs> Don't worry. There we go. Alright, so now I'm going to just put a little bit of extra white right here even though I know we have a whole bunch. Just like that. And then I'm going to swipe back so the white goes back over. And I might even get some cells up here. That's okay. I'm totally cool with that. So we're going to swipe back. Lifting up. Boom. <laughs> Whoops. And you got to make sure that you don't put your transparency back over top of your painting or you're going to get paint all over. There we go. All right. So I'm going to put this aside for a second. Look at that. I like it. You're still, even if you do a second swipe, you're still going to get cells. So I like it because I got more cells up here and more color closer. And I even actually like this right here. It's going to become part of the tail a little bit as well as part of his body and stuff like that. And these are going to keep growing and become wonderful, beautiful cells. Just be careful you don't torch your vinyl. 
Because that would not be good. Okay. I like that. And that's going to keep growing. I'm going to do the sides here because don't forget to do your sides. Add some paint in there. And I'm going to add some white right here to get the last bit of his tail. And now you might be wondering, what about the rest of the silhouette up here, like his head? Well, that's just super easy. I'm just going to take some of my white and just add that where his nose and his head is so that we have a nice clean silhouette, just like that. Beautiful. I actually really like that. This is, I love what's happening right here. I love the big cells that are happening. I think it's really cool. I'm going to grab a little bit of paint right here. Just see some part of that. <laughs> and voila! So that's going to take a few days to dry, definitely. <laughs> But uh, I'll bring you guys back. It'll be a split second for you, but it'll be a few days, definitely. Probably three to four days for this to all dry, because there's a lot of paint on there. And once it's dry, I'll bring you guys back, and we will... I'll show you guys the beautiful scene we're going to paint on the negative side. Okay, this is pretty much dry. There is a little bit of a wet spot there, but... Uh, most of it is pretty dry now, especially the edges, but more importantly, the edge along here is completely dry. So it's time to remove the vinyl silhouette. So I just carefully peel up the vinyl and just take your time. You don't have to go fast. And sometimes because these are cheap canvases, you're going to see this happen which is good because I can show you how to fix it. I do in every video for the silhouettes. And if you ever want to just skip through parts, you can check out video chapters in the description and you click on the different areas if you want to go to different portions of the video. I'm also going to use this handy dandy tool <laughs> because this is the tail of the seahorse. So I'm just going to peel up the vinyl right here because I had glued it down to the side. Ooh, we're getting quite a bit of gesso that's coming up with this portion. That's okay. This way I'll show you how to fix it and then you'll know. And if you do this on wood or higher quality canvases, you won't have this issue. <laughs> this one was a really bad one. Look at that. We are really peeling away. <laughs> so this is good. This might happen to you and you might freak out, but don't freak out because I will help you fix it. I'm going to do this. There we go. So that was a huge portion that came up. You'll see with the lower quality canvases how sparingly the the weave is on the canvas. So that's just because they don't... A uh, higher quality one would be a tighter weave, so you probably wouldn't have as big an issue. But this one is a huge issue, but that's okay. We will fix it. Everything is fixable. And this will be a really good one to show you how we fix all this up. Because this is all coming up. So I'm just going to get the neck part of the seahorse. And I kind of wanted to do this one on wood, but then I thought, well, what if people have trouble and they don't see previous silhouette videos? <laughs> they might still want to see how to fix it. Because obviously when I do these on wood, I don't get this. Obviously when you pull it up on wood, you don't get any issues. 
So that is the silhouette of the seahorse and I love how it faded into the blues. Looks super pretty. And with this, I didn't get any paint leakage actually, so that's pretty cool. I'm just getting some a lot of gesso that peeled up. But easy enough to fix. Grab a paintbrush. Usually a smaller paintbrush is best. Sometimes I even, depending on what the silhouette is, I'll even use like a little pointed paintbrush, but you can also just use like a little small square one. And some gesso. So here I'm just using some Liquidex gesso. Sometimes they say Liquidex gloss varnish, but <laughs> it's gesso. And I just take it right from, because I don't need too, too much. I just take it right from the bottle because I don't have too much on the bottle or in the bottle left. And all you want to do is just paint these areas back in. So the gesso has a bit more structure than regular paint and it'll give a nice tooth to whatever color you want to paint this side. So I'm just going to take my time. I'm going to paint gesso into these areas and because some are rather large, you might have to do a couple of coats. So you're going to find that the gesso is going to push through these holes, which is fine because it's going to dry and create a substructure for the next layer to adhere to. So I have painted in all the areas that peeled up with the vinyl and I'm going to let that dry and I'll probably do a second coat of gesso over some areas because they were so large. One thing to remember, I'm just going to put this here, <laughs> is, and i got to flip this over carefully because everything's wet, you're going to see on the back see how it all came through just let that dry don't wipe it let that gesso dry it's the back of the canvas nobody's gonna see it so just let all of that dry and once it is dry fully then your front is pretty much good to go because if you were to wipe it it's gonna ruin all the work you just did so that's kind of creating a seal for all of that canvas that got peeled up and once you do a second coat, this will be perfect to then paint your negative scene. All right, everything is repaired and dried. <laughs> and I have my positive side of my vinyl ready too. I'm just going to show you guys the back. So here it's all dry. You'll see the gesso is kind of like this weird <laughs> stuck through all the holes, but this is the back, so it all dried good, left for a really smooth surface on the front that we can now clean. And then I can put the positive vinyl on here and paint the negative side. So to clean your paintings, because sometimes you'll get silicone basically in your cells, I'm just going to shine it in the light a little bit. I can see that it's there's a little bit of silicone right there. All I do is I take a little bit of isopropyl alcohol, I put a little bit onto some paper towel, because you don't need too, too much. And then basically, once it's spread out a little, all I do is I just go one, one good cleaning over the whole thing. Just like that, you're gonna see I got a little bit off, but not too much. The important thing is don't re-swipe right away. You wanna let all of that alcohol evaporate. Because if I was to keep swiping, I would basically just lift all the acrylic paint off of my painting, or smear it around anyways. 
So I just want to make sure that all that alcohol dissipates. You can touch it. It'll feel tacky. And when it's not tacky anymore, that means you can swipe again to try and get that silicone off. So I'm just going to take a look. Looks like I still have a little bit of silicone right here, but not too much. And the alcohol, the isopropyl alcohol evaporates fairly quickly. So that is nice. <laughs> and I might just rework that little area a little bit. So I'm just going to do a little bit of extra rubbing there. But other than that, it should be pretty good to go. And I just shine it in the light a little bit. I didn't go over this part, so I'm just going to wipe a couple times right there. And that looks pretty good. And that alcohol will evaporate pretty quickly. Now, what I want to do, because I have cells right up to the edge here. I love what happened here and all of this and in the tail. Love it. For this seahorse, probably hard to see because it's white and white, but there is an, a lip and an edge that is created by the vinyls. So that helps to hand paint up to it. Or you can also use the positive side of your vinyl to protect this side of the painting while you paint this. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to peel this off. The hardest part is usually just grabbing an edge. <laughs> but once you get it, you're good to go. And just be careful it doesn't stick back on itself. Is all you kind of got to watch for. Like that. Mostly it's just on the seahorse, it's the tail that you kind of got to be careful of. And then I just realign it. Now it should line up exactly. So just kind of work it until you get it exactly on there protecting your painting. Because the vinyl, you can pick it up, you can move it around, and you should be able to really line it up absolutely perfect. Like right there. Yeah, sometimes it sticks to you. Let's see. It doesn't quite line up perfectly under here, so I'm just going to keep working with this. Okay, so the positive side of the vinyl is lined up, and you don't want to use any liquid glosses. This is just to protect it, but you don't want it to actually peel up your paint. So you just stick it down. It's just kind of on there, stuck on there really lightly, and basically it'll help protect this beautiful swipe while we paint this side. Now this side, I'm going to paint with straight acrylics, not the flow acrylics like you would use on the swiping side because I want to just paint a beautiful underwater scene. I'll probably do this in stages with uh, the acrylic paint like maybe a a nice layered effect and then I'll add as I go and that's the nice part about acrylic paints is you can paint, let it dry, paint again, let it dry and keep adding and adding layers to your scene. So this is going to be a more in-depth one but I'll get some paint so we'll get started. Okay, so I have my acrylic paints. I got some turquoise, some white, some blue. And I'm basically going to mix up a like a base color, like a gradient that I'm going to paint the scene on top of. So I want it to be, you know, underwater, so it's kind of light at the top, light blue. I'm going to fade it into a deeper blue at the bottom. I'm going to take some paint, acrylic paint, mix it with a bit of white. <laughs> now you can mix this separately on a palette if you want. Or you can mix it right at the top. Totally up to you how you want to create your scene. Kind of liking that blue. Maybe a bit more white. 
Now, important thing to remember is when you're dealing with the vinyl, you want to push down and away from the vinyl. That way you're not getting paint. Like if you were to do it like this first, you might get paint that would go underneath the vinyl. So I just take my brush and I kind of just push away from the vinyl. I'm just going to make sure I get the top part. And the edges of the painting. There is a lot of paint on here, but I actually like using a lot of paint when I do my negative side. 